We are all time travelers. And even as we move around the world, we stay connected to the past and future by a sense of place and tradition. My name is Rhonda Rich, and I love to tell stories and I love to collect watches. As a journalist who writes about watches, I have the best job in the world. I also like to visit the local flea market in Toronto, hoping to find watches with a history. This 1970s era GUB glass huta is one of my best finds. I was working on a story about actor Joel McHale's Glass Huta original 70s panorama date. Like my flea market find, I was attracted to it because I was a kid in the 1970s, and I always had a nostalgia for the kind of watches and jewelry my parents wore in that era. But I was also drawn to my watch because it was a mystery. I couldn't stop wondering how it started its life during the Cold War in the GDR yet somehow ended up in Toronto. I decided I wanted to take my watch back to its homeland, to research its roots, and to connect it to the tradition of watchmaking in Glass Huta. I wanted to introduce it to its ancestors in the museum there, and to see its family tree. And because my watch has been ticking away without a service since the 1970s, I thought it would be a good idea for it to get a cleaning while we were in Glass Huta, if only so I could get a peek at its inner workings, its DNA. It takes time to have a watch properly restored. So while my watchmaker worked on my timepiece, I visited Glasshuta's chief designer to see how the company's history inspires the current collection. Women are often overlooked in both genealogy and in the timeline of horology. She showed me that the earliest wristwatches were worn by women. I noticed a family resemblance between the shape of my own watch and the modern Pavolina collection. She also showed me a classic 1970s Glasshuta Spacichron and talked about how the styling of that era influenced the look of the 70s panorama date. Some see the 1970s as a dark age in watchmaking that with the advent of quartz movements, mechanisms got lost in the shuffle. Glasshuta's watchmakers at that time honored the traditions of their forefathers by building fine mechanical movements, but married them with a bold 1970s design. Mikhail's watch is a tribute to that era, and a mighty fine one at that. Family trees can be complicated. The further you look back, the more relatives you discover. So you can imagine how exciting it was to find my watch's sister in the German Watch Museum in Glashütte. I have a great 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 grandfather named Jürgen Kien. He was a soldier from Saxony working for the Swedish crown in the 1600s. I joke that I have trace elements of Saxon in my blood. And while I may never know the name of the woman who carried her prized watch with her to Toronto, she has left her trace behind in my imagination. I picture her preparing for this big move by packing up her most prized possessions, including this watch, as a reminder of home. And here in Glass Huta, I was able to reunite my little watch with its home and its family. And I can see the traces of my watch's past and the DNA of its future. <laughs>